Welcome everyone to another episode of Dark Souls of Ash and Dust. One of the first things you might notice in today's episode is that what I'm currently saying does not match the Mr. Sketchhead that's in the top right of your screen. The reason is very simple for that. Um, I recorded this episode and it turned out that me being an idiot, I forgot to turn the sound up on my microphone. The recording volume. So we ain't got nothing in terms of commentary sound, at least live commentary sound. So here I am sitting in shame during post editing, fixing my mistake. Um, yeah, wonderful. So that's what happened to me about an hour ago. So yeah, let's get this show on the road. What I decided to do just to make this kind of roll along a little bit more smoothly is that I decided to make this video into sort of an sort of a highlight reel and you might notice that this video is around like 22 minutes long which really tells you how much great content there is in one of my episodes but really joking aside what I basically did is I cut out uh, all the filler of just me walking from area to area because it's just boring you know you saw one right there as I teleported to the Undead Parish because in this episode I decided to move on. Um, gargoyles is the first thing I'm doing here as I conveniently forget that this area is full of enemies. In terms of... yeah, the lock on there fucked me over almost. Uh, in terms of the difficulty in today's episode, I still think this mod is harder and you will see with my performance that there's a lot of moments where I get by just by the skin of my teeth. Uh, this moment being a prime example of that. The issue is my Estus flasks are at base level, which means I basically get no healing. Speaking of this moment, there is one part I wanted to rewatch because. I'm pretty sure this game was on some bullshit. I think right here. Yeah! What the hell was that hit? What the hell was that? I dodged that. That was... Man. You know, I think I said this in the video somewhere. That sometimes this mod really does bring that Scholar of the First Sim vibe. Honestly. <laughs> like, Dark Souls 2 hitboxes all over the place. Uh, so let's compensate with a sick parry. I've had some issues with parrying, uh, especially in episode 2, the previous episode. And here it is. Here it is. Mr. Partisan. People were kind of going back and forth, suge suggesting weapons for me to use, some strength or whatever. But the Partisan came up as a recommendation and I decided to go with it because I really, really like the Partisan. And conveniently... It was here. So, yeah, it's not just convenient, that's very, very convenient. So, in this episode, I got my weapon. I said it in the episode as well, uh, but the other thing I'm probably gonna go for is I will get some boss weapon. I don't know which boss weapon yet, but I'll get one. Mainly because I almost never use the boss weapons, and there are some really cool, cool ones in this game. So maybe I'll go for like, I don't know, the Fury Sword or something, because those weapons are pretty epic. Uh, we have the Mystery Key, so and the Firekeeper Soul, which is kind of exactly, like within this two minutes, I have basically gotten everything I wanted. So that's really good. And we let out Mr. Lautrec. I was talking about the fact that I am going to try doing as many of the quest lines as I can throughout this game. Just to first of all see if they're any different. Which I heard that some quest lines are different. Aside from the fact that there are some extra ones. Uh, but also because it's fun. It's fun, you know. These, this game has fun quest lines once, you're, once you know what you're doing. Funny thing is this dude gives you cracked red eye orbs. Um... Of course, you cannot really use them because the issue with this mod, well, not issue, but with modding in general, modding Dark Souls, is you have to be offline on Steam. Otherwise, if Steam detects that you're using mods, 
and you are online you can't tell whether the mod is a cheating mod or not so it can ban you ban you as in just restricting you to playing with other people who are modding but again that part is full of cheaters one thing that's nice though i really really like this law track placement first of all he's standing like chester um Second of all, it is no longer possible to easily kick him off the ledge, which is pretty funny. So there we go, did an up Estus Flask upgrade. But yeah, I, I really like this because, well, to be honest with you, when it comes down to it, when you think about it, Lotrek and Chester are essentially the same character at the end of the day. So it makes sense for him to stand like that. So that is a nice, that is a nice little little touch there. Here I was going for the partisan levels. 13 strength is needed. Um, yeah, but of course we're gonna stick with the S stock for a while because we still don't have that thing upgraded. I decided to turn back into human form. I don't exactly remember why. Oh yeah, I remember why. I wanted to check out the NPC or summon situation for the gargoyles. Uh, which we're gonna do right about now. I really like working on timing these. Whenever there is a fate, because I can see it, because I have it imported in my editing software. I trimmed out all the excess and now I can just, you know see when a fade is coming up and I ain't talking about haircuts but I came back up here it's only Soler that's here I don't think the summons are changed really although I have heard that there might be some new summons new invaders definitely all right so here we have a little conga line coming up I don't know why I did this uh, why I killed all of these this is like ladder pvp v2 Oh yeah, I remember why, because I was hesitating on whether I was going to summon Solaire or not. And in my hesitation I was like, let me kill these enemies while I, I think. But then I realized that uh, the quest line does not break if you don't summon him here, so it's, it's, it's not necessary. For Ornstein and Smo, we'll have to we'll have to get that summon going. And of course, here we have Mr. Gargoyles. I watched the cutscene because, you know, I'm taking this like the Dark Souls 2 playthrough that I'm streaming, <coughs> which you should check out. By the way, you can follow my Discord, and then you'll know, which is in the description. Then you'll always know when I'm streaming. Um, and rewatching these cutscenes is fun because I mean I, it's, just, it's just fun. This game is cool. I was wondering throughout the fight whether there was gonna be some extra gimmick uh, to this boss. Aside from the fact that I have terrible aim for this first while, there is actually a gimmick. It looks like I can expect can most bosses to have some twist. Because I'm going for the tail, which I did get. Uh, one of the easier tails to cut off. That was like surprising. Um, even watching that back, I feel like I should have gotten the, the dodge there. This ain't Dark Souls 2. Yeah, I was a little bit worried here. And here is the gimmick. Uh, the gimmick for this boss fight is that... Oh, look at that. I legit almost died to the gargoyles. I think this registered with me when I was playing, but... That was a holy shit moment, watching this back. So anyways, the gimmick here is that... Uh, the second gargoyle has a lot more HP than he had in 
the original fight. I think it starts off at like less than half. So that's kind of the main, the main twist of it. I kind of got fucked up here. I'm not gonna lie. This, this boss fight was a little bit rough. Until I killed this gargoyle. After that, with one, it's it's easy money, as we like to say on the. Dark Souls 2 playthrough. So that's Gargoyles. Close. A little bit closer than I would have anticipated. Not gonna lie. See, honestly, the thing is, and I said this in the episode as well, uh, I might have been a little overly harsh on Blue Tearstone before. Because looking at all the happenings in the previous episodes I'm like fairly sure that Blue Tearstone has saved my ass a couple of times including there like without Blue Tearstone I would have been dead and I think it's gonna do the same thing a couple of more times in this video maybe one more at least so you know Blue, Blue Tearstone Blue Tearstone is the homie maybe Maybe it's not good that everybody is shitting constantly on Blue Tear Stone. Because it's always like the bastard child ring, because everybody is very, very clear on why Red Tear Stone is good. But Blue Tear Stone ain't really it. Anyways, usual thing I always do go back to the NPC, Oswald, get the gesture because. How could you leave that gesture behind? And then move out. Mr. Oswald. I mean, the fact that he's standing in this pose makes him probably the best NPC in the entire game. I don't know. Well, I still skipped his dialogue because I'm like that. Very interesting thing. And I like this. This is really cool. He sells Eyes of Death and Souvenirs of Reprisals. Which really makes sense when you think about it, in that you cannot be online in this mod. And Sunlight Medals too. Since you cannot be online, you'd normally have to farm. And Oswald there gives you a little way out. And that's really cool. I wish Dark Souls 3 did that. So here I am, I went back to... what's his name? Uh, to upgrade the partisan, decided to spend the resources uh, to get this thing, to get this thing upgraded. So yeah, the fact that he's selling those, even though they are very expensive, is 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 very cool. It's very cool because that means the mod creators knew. Well, I mean knew or like were not assholes, so they implemented a. A nice little system. And again, of course, farming for the items is very much possible. But it's it's not the same. It's not the same, I'd say. One thing I am having trouble with in this playthrough, and I'm going to be perfectly 100% honest with you here, is figuring out what the fuck to level up. Because going for just HP, that's my phone, Going for just HP and uh, endurance is a little bit boring. Um, the partisan doesn't really scale with anything. And pyromancy doesn't need shit. I mean, of course, when we get to upgrading the gloves, it's going to be a whole different story. But... Until then... It's it's not gonna be easy. Anyways, lower on that Berg time. Decided to go and tackle this area because I don't know, it just seems seems appropriate. It's usually how I play through this game. Got some doggos. But here, 
and here. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Because you see that, right? You see the Capra Demon. The Capra Demon is out here. Stuck against a wall, running into nothing. Um, This shit is kind of crazy. And now he attacks you and I was like, what the fuck is going on? I wasn't too worried because you see me play the Binding of Lordran and he runs away like a bitch. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. I like it. Capra is a bitch. So yeah, I'm not... I wasn't too worried because I fought about like 70 Capra demons throughout Binding of Lordran. It's probably the boss that showed up the most frequently. So, you know, Somebody. I'm like on the Capra hype train, 100%. Yeah, we're gonna res rescue him, because I have the residence key. You opened the door for me. Thank you. But yeah, it's really weird, he ran away. I thought I might never escape. Gotta run back to his little doggo friends, right? Or something. Thief set. Target shield. The target shield. Don't worry. I'll realize later that maybe I should be using the target shield. Um, doing some parrying here. I figured out in this fight. And it took me a while. That black knights are non-repostable in this game. Non-backstabbable and non-repostable. Those are two words to add to your dictionary. Yeah. It kind of makes sense, I guess, because why can you repost Black Knights and not like Berenique Knights and shit like that? But it caught me off guard, so. I think Silver Knights in Anor Londo, especially, are most likely gonna be a little bit problematic. The fact that I won't be able to repost them because that's usually how I take on the silver knights I just repost king them or parry king them me being a parry god I realize that I should use the R2 of the partisan just to you know here's when I figure it out the quadruple nipple shield you should use it boy yeah I figured out finally that I should be using the R2 of the partisan because it's pretty useful. And here I am going to try again. But really it's good, it's good. It, it covers like a huge space as you saw there. So pretty crazy. This scared the shit out of me, honestly. Where the hell does he come out from? And he goes in and hides like a bitch. I like this little event. Apparently you can do quite a lot with Capra Demon's AI. Uh, because I remember in Daughters of Ash they had that Capra basically like invader type enemy. And in this game they did the little Capra runaway. So maybe Capra's AI is... I don't know, easy to manipulate or something. I like it. There's a Black Knight here. Sick dodge though, by me. And he was an absolute idiot. Took a shit ton of fall damage. So Black Knights are not the smartest. Of course with the target shield it's even easier to parry god these fools. Here, here I was trying to go for a backstab because um, I wanted to test it out. But apparently you can't backstab them either. Uh, which is a little bit strange. Well, it makes sense though. 
and get all these souls. I'm sure you'll be able to do something with that. That's part of a quest. I mean, it's specifically the game basically says, like, bitch, you should keep these. Uh, so I'm sure there's gonna be something with the Black Knight souls. So I'm not even using them. I am. I am okay as it is. I don't really need souls. Yeah, she sells pyro stuff, some shitty bolts. I decided to buy a couple of purple mosses. Like a retard, I did not buy Blooming Purple because I'm too cheapo. I don't want to spend the souls. But that might be a decision that I'll come to regret later. What am I talking about? It's not a might be. It's a definite. Anyways, just got back to Firelink Shrine. Uh, did some leveling up. I still have no fucking clue what to level. I don't know why I even thought about leveling my faith. Decided to eventually just get another tomb and slot and some endurance. I want to get some endurance because I want to do some interesting fashion souls. And we need that. Anyways, back to Capra. Here, this is interestingly the standard Capra fight. That's, I still don't know how the hell that hit me, and I don't know how the hell he fell down like that. Did you see that? He fell completely on his back. I don't know if that's a mod thing or that can always happen, but pretty weird. So anyways, Capra fight. Usual Capra fight. Nothing much to it. I guess the him running away is the only little gimmick. Oh no, it's not. It's not because the second doggo spawns later. And I'm gonna be honest with you. This fucked me up so much. This threw me off so much. That I got killed by him. By Capra Demon. <coughs> Luckily. We can instantly cut to the next attempt. Yeah, that was a gimmick. I almost died here again. Oh, this is where the blue tear stone saved my ass again. That death would have been bad. Yeah, so anyways, um, Capra is a gimmick in the vanilla game as well. And the gimmick is you either get killed in the first 20 seconds or you win against him. This second dog spawning was a similar gimmick, you know. I didn't anticipate it first time around. I'm anticipating it now, so... It's not even gonna be a problem. Because, you know, this guy is not difficult at all. I have no idea where the dog spawns from though. It just fucking comes out of nowhere. Lock on, having some trouble with lock on. The lock on was more of an issue than basically anything else in this fight. And at this point, since I didn't try it, I didn't time it, I'm pretty sure a third dog cannot spawn. It's not like on a timer or something. This is about as easy as it gets. And we stab Capra in the face. Somehow, a, s a more cinematic end than normal. Usual reward, key to the depths. It looks like this. Yeah, again, I heard that this game doesn't fuck with the progression too much, so... Yeah. Easy. Easy. And that was Mr. Capra Demon. And after Mr. Capra Demon, I have decided to start wrapping up the episode here, slowly. Which means that this post-commentary is going to be coming to an end as well. Um, I know, I know this was a scuffed episode. This was a mad scuffed episode, but hey. I still think it turned out okay. We did quite well in this episode. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. As always, turn on post notifications if you want to keep up with my content. If you want to know when I'm streaming. Join my Discord, follow me on Instagram. Thank you guys very much for watching, hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, take care, peace out, and see you next time. Bye, past Mr. Sketchhead.